Learning check six. I hope you didn't think you could forget your pressures across the capillary that drive flow across the capillary because those same principles will be applied to filtration at the, the kidney, the glomerulus of the kidney. So let's do this learning check. You're going to calculate NFP. Net filtration pressure is equal to all the forces out minus all the forces in out of the capillary into the capillary. So all forces out is our hydrostatic pressure in the capillary minus, I'm sorry, all forces out, let's, let's do the other one, the all other force out is osmotic pressure in, in the interstitial fluid. So that says there, that's one. And then subtract from that the forces in which is 26 plus zero. This equals 10 millimeters of mercury. So in this example here, the net filtration pressure is this way. What does that mean? Filtration is occurring. This would be at the arterial end of a capillary. Um, at the venous end, that's where reabsorption occurs. And this is actually, look, you don't have to know about reabsorption anymore um, here. We're going to always have filtration occurring at the glomerulus. So let's look at these same principles applied to the glomerulus. What factors do we need to consider? The same ones. So we've got hydrostatic pressure in the glomerular capillaries. GC equals glomerular capillaries. This is going to be a force out, out of the capillary, the hydrostatic pressure in those capillaries. We also have a hydrostatic pressure in the capsular space. Hydrostatic pressure in the capsular space. CS equals capsular, not to be confused with cap capillary, space. This is a force in. It's due to the fluid that is in the capsular space. Then we've got our osmotic pressure. We've got osmotic pressure in the glomerulus. This is going to be a force in, right? It's the pull into the capillary due to proteins and cells being in that capillary. The last pressure is osmotic pressure in that capsular space. This is going to always be zero. Cells and proteins cannot enter this space, so there's going to be no osmotic pressure because they're not there. Fluid can enter, so we do have a hydrostatic pressure, but the thing that contributes to this osmotic pressure across capillaries is proteins and cells, which are only in the glomerular side. Okay, so what this means is we're gonna look like this. Here's the same picture with some numbers, um, and we want to know what net filtration pressure is. Net filtration pressure is all forces out minus all forces in. So in other words, that is going to be hydrostatic pressure in the glomerular capillaries. That's the only force out because there's not osmotic pressure in the capsular space. That is zero, so we don't need to consider that. If you, if you want to, you can add that. It's always going to be zero. So we're going to take those forces out and subtract the forces in. Forces in are osmotic pressure in the glomerular capillaries plus hydrostatic pressure in the capsular space. So that's 55 minus our two forces in are 30 plus 15. 
Notice you can do this a different way. You can do 55 minus 30 minus 15. Same thing, right? Um, either way, it is 10 millimeters of mercury. What is that? That's the force out. That's our net filtration pressure. It is positive, positive 10 millimeters of mercury. That is a small pressure, but high enough to allow for glomerular filtration. Net filtration pressure at the glomerulus is called the glomerular filtration rate. And now you know what goes into it. Let's keep looking at it. So glomerular filtration rate or GFR. This is the volume of filtrate that is produced right in this renal corpuscle, and then it's um, per minute. So glomerular filtration rate is all the is based in net filtration, but summed in both kidneys in all the nephrons. So one, what, what determines glomerular filtration rate? Net filtration pressure. I think that's a big thing. The primary pressure that determines this is glomerular hydrostatic pressure, so blood pressure. Um, we've already seen that with blood pressure regulation. Um, the kidney urine production can be regulated by blood pressure. Um, the other things that determine glomerular filtration rate is going to be surface area for filtration. So what I mean by this is, again, we're adding together all the glomerular capillaries junctions with um, Bowman's capsules in about 1 million neurons, nephrons in all of the kidneys. So when the surface area would change would be, for example, a kidney disease. Otherwise, it's a fairly stable factor. Number three is the permeability of our filtration membrane. So something that is determined by the, the structure, right, those podocytes um, and the fenestrated pores, um, generally these capillaries are highly permeable. compared to other capillaries. So this, but this is gonna be regulated. So we're going to regulate GFR by both intrinsic regulation in the kidney and extrinsic, so by the nervous and endocrine systems. Why we want to regulate this, um, this is going to determine urine production, right? So the volume of filtrate produced, a high GFR, what do you think? That's going to mean we have high, higher urine output. A low GFR, that's going to mean we have less urine output. So it's the first place where we can regulate urine production. Of course, we're going to regulate reabsorption and secretion as well. One more thing here. So we're talking about filtration right here. Your, all of your plasma, all of your blood is filtered every 20 minutes. How crazy is that? So why aren't you just like peeing like crazy? Um, how can you survive if tw every 20 minutes, all of your blood, your, your plasma enters your nephrons? Well, it's because 99% of it is reabsorbed. But it is amazing what your kidneys 